Okay, so lastly, what we would like to do is understand um, by looking at the equations that SOLIDWORKS is going to be solving, uh, that your CFD solver in general is going to be solving, we want to kind of analyze uh, what the dynamics of the equations are going to be for an unsteady flow and develop some characteristic numbers, dimensionless numbers that are going to help us to do that. And so uh, this is going to be quite convenient to do in vector form and would be much more annoying to do in individual form. Uh, like looking at individual equations component by component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, your velocity vector, which is going to have components u and v, and your gradient vector operator, actually, which is going to have components d, dx, and di, di y, not d, di. It's a partial derivative. And, um, and then we're going to look at the mass conservation equation. So I'll show you the mass conservation equation, I'll show you the momentum conservation equation, and then you'll see the connection between the uh, individual components and the vector component and the vector expressions, which is useful. Because sometimes you see someone manipulating a vectorized equation, and you haven't done that before, and you're like, how does the equation work for vectors? How do I get from one to the other? And so this is just going to be a nice library for equations that you've seen before where you can see, ah, okay, that symbol relates to you know, this other uh, way of expressing the same thing. So we start off by saying that del dot V equals zero. This is our mass conservation equation if we have incompressible flow. And that is equivalent to saying that uh, di di x, di di y dot, so that's a vector dotted with another vector, uv is equal to zero, which is equivalent to saying di u, di x, take one, dot product, we know how that goes, multiply the same element in each vector and sum them, so we have di u, di x plus di v, di y equals zero. So this is a vector version of the mass conservation equation, and, a, uh, in, and, a, and that equation written out fully in terms of its components. Um, and so it's pretty simple in this case. What we'll do now is we'll look at the uh, 2D momentum equation in vector form. So if we write this out in vector form, we're going to have rho uh, dv dt plus uh, v dot del v is equal to, um, and we're gonna have nu uh, del squared v minus, uh, yeah, sorry, minus uh, the pressure term here, so del P, uh, and then plus any body forces. And so we're gonna write body forces as G with a vector on top because you know the direction of gravity is relative to your coordinate system. And sometimes it's convenient to have a coordinate system that is not necessarily aligned with the Z direction or the Y direction, uh, where that's not necessarily aligned with gravity. So helpful to express gravity as a vector. Um, okay. Now, if we look at this equation, uh, first I will just note the components of it, which are useful to you to know. So we have a momentum transport equation uh, component of the equation, which corresponds to something called a material derivative that tells you how the flow changes along uh, a path in the flow, how properties of the flow change. And that is something you will encounter in higher levels fluids courses if you're getting engaged in this and you would like to do uh, further studies in CFD and, and maybe theoretical fluid mechanics, you really unpack this term a little more and, and understand this as a single operator. And we're also gonna have viscous forces. So how does the shear um, affect neighboring fluid elements? And then we have pressure forces, acceleration and deceleration based on the pressure of the flow. And then we have just general body or gravitational forces. And again, just for a 2D flow, uh, these two equations, mass and momentum, here we've written it in vector form, that's what's going to be solved by the solver. It's just seeking solutions to this subject of the boundary conditions that you impose. And so if we kind of pick this apart, we can see um, behaviors that are going to be relevant to the solutions that we get. Um, so what we want to do now is look at the X and Y direction momentums, 
So if we have X direction momentum, uh, let us uh, actually, you know what, before I do that, let me just divide by rho to give a little bit of a nicer expression here. So we're going to have dv dt plus v dot del v equals new. And actually this here is a mistake. This should be new. And here we're going to have new, which is equal to uh, mu over rho. And that is gonna be multiplied by del squared v minus one over rho del p uh, plus one over rho g. So this, so this is going to be a convenient form to use. And <clears throat> first we're gonna look at the x direction momentum. So x direction momentum, we have du dt. That part is easy. We're just gonna get dv dt, the d distributes. Uh, so if we have d uh, v dt, that is like saying d dt of u and v. So it will just apply to both. And if we take only the x direction components, we get that in this equation. For the next one, if we have v dot del, that is equivalent to uh, u and v dot product with di, di x, and di, di y. And that is gonna be equal to u di, di x plus v di, di y. And that is an operator. So now that can be multiplied by a vector. So we multiply that to both components. So if we have v dot del times v, that is like saying that we have uh, u, oops, what am I saying here? We have u di di x plus v di di y multiplied by u and v, which is equal to u di u di x plus v di u di y, and then um, uh, plus uh, u di v di x plus v di v di y. So again, we're just gonna wanna collect the components from that procedure that end up in the x direction momentum. So I will now just kind of not go through that in detail for the rest of the uh, equations, but you will see. So we'll get something like u du dx plus v du dy is equal to nu. And then if you do the same thing here, you're going to get di squared u di x squared plus di squared v di y squared. And then you subtract minus one over rho uh, dp dx. Oops, dp dx, sorry. And it's one over rho dp dx. Uh, and then plus one over rho uh, gx. And you have quite a similar expression for y direction momentum. I'll just write it out quickly for you. So you have dv dt plus v du dx, di u dx, sorry, u di v di x plus v di v di y is equal to nu di squared v di x squared plus di squared v di y squared. And then we're going to uh, subtract, uh, let me just make a clear division here between these two things. We're going to subtract uh, one over rho dp dy and add one over rho gy. So here, of course, we have g vector is equal to the gx and gy components. Uh, so there you can kind of see that we've started with vector components. We expand that. We get these expressions that we were familiar with before, but we're going to work with the vector uh, expressions in this lecture because it is going to end up being <clears throat> quite a bit easier for us to do so. What we would like to do is non-dimensionalize those equations. So let's say non-dimensionalization. Uh, 
and we're going to introduce some scales. So our scales are going to be L for the X and Y directions, uh, frequency F for time. Um, we're going to have U infinity, which will apply to U and V velocities. And then we will have uh, P infinity, but we're also going to have a static pressure, uh, P naught. And then we will have a gravitational uh, constant G, which is going to be equal to the magnitude of this. So G is equal to, you know, GX squared plus GY squared square root of that. So this is the constant that you all know. Um, okay, so then we're going to introduce the same order one uh, fluctuating variables. Uh, so we're going to have X prime is equal to X over L. We are going to have Y prime equals Y over L. In other words, this means that V prime equals V over L. Uh, we will also have <clears throat> P prime, which is going to be a little more complicated. It's just related to the difference between these. So it will be P minus P infinity over the static pressure minus P infinity. And then we're going to have um, our operator del prime, which will be equal to del over 1 over L. In other words, it's going to be equal to L del. And we will also have a non-dimensional time t prime, which is going to be equal to t divided by 1 over the frequency. Similar idea here, where that is equal to ft. OK, so if we take this and we uh, look at that mass conservation equation that we start with, we had del dot v equals to 0. What we do is we input the results into that, uh, we, we, we swap out these scales. So we're going to have L del uh, prime, and that's going to be multiplied by, uh, oh, that's incorrect. So we're going to have, uh, we'll actually have is del prime over L dot V prime, uh, times u infinity is going to be equal to um, uh, u infinity over L times del uh, prime dot v prime equals to zero, which simplifies, of course, you can get rid of the constants uh, to say that our non-dimensional components uh, must also be equal to zero. They also satisfy a very similar expression. And we saw something like this earlier in the class. And so now you're familiar with it. Uh, this is uh, somewhat noteworthy in some circumstances, but in this case, it's not going to be very important to the analysis that we're doing. Uh, the second thing we'll do is apply the same non-dimensionalization to the momentum equations in vector form. And you'll see that at the end of this, you're going to be glad that we only do it for one equation instead of for the two separate equations. So we have dv dt uh, plus uh, V dot del V equals new del squared V um, minus uh, one over rho grad P. And then we're going to add one over rho times the uh, gravitation force. Now, if we substitute in uh, the quantities from earlier, we will have F times uh, L in the first case. Sorry, we'll have F times U infinity. So we're gonna have F U infinity times DV prime, DT prime. And then we are going to have U infinity squared over L times V dot del V, which is going to be equal to, uh, and then we can, Substitute, so we're going to have uh, L squared, and we will have uh, U infinity. So we're going to have new U infinity over L squared. That gets multiplied by del prime squared uh, V prime. And then for pressure, uh, you can see that earlier we have uh, this pressure defined. I'm going to bring this down here, and then we'll take a closer look at it. We have P is equal to P. Uh, d prime is equal to p minus p infinity 
over P naught minus P infinity, meaning that P is equal to, uh, and we're gonna call this delta P. So we have P equals to P uh, infinity plus delta P times P prime. Uh, and that's what we're gonna substitute into the governing equations. So here we're going to have plus um, L over rho del prime times P infinity plus delta P P prime. And then we will add one over, we'll add G over rho times G prime vector. Okay, what we can do now is we can uh, multiply both sides by uh, L over U infinity squared, which is basically designed to get rid of this term. And that is going to give us a lot of very nice uh, uh, non-dimensional numbers that um, help us to analyze the flow. So if we uh, multiply by, so multiply by, L over U infinity squared, we are going to get, of course, uh, F L over U infinity times DV prime DT prime plus, and then we have nothing in front of the uh, ejection term here. So we have V prime dot del prime B prime is equal to, and now if we multiply by L over U infinity squared, we are going to have, of course, uh, new uh, over u infinity l, which is going to look familiar to you already. So then we have del prime squared uh, dot v squared uh, and prime squared. And then we will have, um, okay, so for the pressure term, uh, one thing to note is that when you apply this derivative, so let's zoom in on this guy. If we have del prime, times P, uh, so uh, times P infinity uh, plus delta P times P prime. The only one of these that will be varying potentially in space is P prime. So this guy is going to del P infinity, P infinity is a constant, so that's equal to zero. So what we can do is uh, collect all of the terms here. So we have L over rho, and we're going to have a delta P, so we're gonna have L delta P over rho, and that will be multiplied by L, so it's gonna be L squared and divided by U infinity squared, and that is gonna be times del prime P prime. And then lastly, we're going to have, um, we're going to have uh, G L over rho U, infinity squared times G prime. So this is our overall equation. And what we'll be able to do now is define some characteristic numbers. Uh, and these characteristic numbers are going to be each defined with respect to the non-dimensional terms that we get in this equation. So here, we're going to have the Struhl number, which is, e which is defined as the Characteristic frequency times L over U. So we have Struhl number. We're going to have a Reynolds number that you've seen many times before. And that is given by um, UL over nu. We're going to have an Euler number, which is defined as uh, delta P uh, times L divided by rho U squared. So that is the Euler number. And we will finally have a Froude number, which is defined as U over uh, square root of GL. And so all of these numbers have a different place in terms of analyzing various aspects of the flow field. And we can write out this non-dimensional vector equation in terms of these numbers. And uh, we'll discuss the meaning in a moment. So but first, we're going to say that we have the Struhl number. So here you can see this is Struhl. This is uh, Reynolds to the 1 half. This is Euler. 
And this is uh, fruit to the minus one over two, or fruit to the minus two, I should say. So we can say that we have Struhol dv prime dt prime plus uh, v prime dot del prime times v prime is equal to uh, one over Reynolds times uh, del prime squared v prime uh, plus, uh, sorry, minus the Euler number times the pressure gradient. So minus Euler number times um, del prime v prime. And then lastly, we're going to add the Froude number to the negative two uh, multiplied by the non-dimensional uh, gravity number. And for the flows that we're going to look at in this uh, class, where we're going to simulate, uh, let me just kind of box that in and note that as an important number that describes the balance between these different between the dynamics of the flow with respect to these characteristic numbers about the flow. And, uh, and the, what we'll have in class is that Euler and Froude are going to be basically negligible. So we can kind of neglect these in the, in the context of the simulations we do here. And the Struhol and Reynolds are gonna describe the balance of the, the key forces. And what we're going to have, if we return to this flow over a bluff body situation, is that for this kind of creep flow situation, we have a Reynolds number of approximately one, and we're going to have in that case, a Struhol number of zero. So you have no time varying component. And you can see that in that balance, uh, uh, where if, you know, if we ignore the Euler and we ignore the Froude, and if the order of this guy is approximately one, then that means that the Struhol number is going to have to uh, be zero so that the Reynolds is balanced with the advection term. Uh, in another case, we're going to have a wake develop over the flow. And you're gonna get vortices and dynamic features. And in this case, we're gonna have re greater than one, and that means this is going to have to be balanced by a Struhol number that is greater than one, such that the overall effect of those terms can balance each other out dynamically. And when that's the case, we're going to have a characteristic frequency F. Which is going to be related to the vortex shedding frequency, to the creation of these swirling features in the wake. And so these are kind of the basic conceptual tools that we need to understand and analyze the simulations that we're going to do in the next test.